John Cena has always been an extremely hard worker in the gym. They've been following him. He leaves nothing in the tank, whether he's training to add mass, get ripped, or he's a maintenance phase. Simon the Board AO here. Thank you for joining me as always. And today we are talking about John Cena. And the reason we're talking about John Cena is because when I was a kid and I was growing up and I got into wrestling and bodybuilding and lifting weights, one of my favorite things was when a magazine like Men's Health or Men's Fitness, whatever it would be, I think, uh, what was it called? Flex used to do it a lot as well. They would publish the workouts and the diets of wrestlers. And I'd be like, hey ho, if I do this, I'm going to look like them. And it never worked. But I found this one the other day. It literally says John Cena workout and diet program. It was on Fitness Vault, and it says discover the training and diet that action hero and WWE legend John Cena follows to maintain his muscular lean physique. Now, a few people when John Cena came back to Raw a couple of weeks ago said he looked smaller. I think that was fair. He's also a 45-year-old man. He's also a movie star now, so he may have to be changing his bodies for specific roles. He was still in pretty damn good shape, and some people took that way too far, and I thought it was nuts. Now, we do have to say, because I've been through this already, just to sort of, you know, scope it out a little bit, don't really explain where this came from. <laughs> so I have seen John Cena in interviews say that the main staple that he has carried on from when he was doing a teenager bodybuilding to now is that he still takes weight gainers. Now, I would not recommend weight gainers to anyone, even people that struggle to put on weight because I don't think they're particularly good for you. That's not in this plan. So again, let's take it with a pinch of salt. But it is interesting, and it says when it comes to rugged muscle mass, few Hollywood action stars can stand alongside John Cena. This is true. In this article, we'll draw down on Cena's workout and diet program. We'll find out what he does on a daily basis to maintain his size, stay lean, be mean for movie roles. So apparently he has a 50-inch chest, a 36-inch waist, 20-inch biceps, 250 pounds, 6 foot 1, nicknamed the prototype. I mean, straight away you get worried, right? He hasn't been the prototype since 2002. And he was never the prototype in WWE for more than a hiccup. But his middle names are Felix Anthony, John Felix Anthony Cena. So we don't need to know about the story because I'm sure you already know about him. But there you go. Born in 1997 in Massachusetts. He's done really well. Right, here we go. John Cena, nutrition. John Cena has always been an extremely hard worker in the gym. They've been following him. He leaves nothing in the tank, whether he's training to add mass, get ripped, or he's a maintenance phase. However, to fuel up that level of activity, he requires a ton of energy. So straight away, again, it's wishy-washy because depending on what he's doing, he's going to change his diet. But we shall take it away anyway. They also know the specifics. 3,600 calories a day, which I would presume for someone like John Cena may be maintenance. Still quite high, but he is a big old chap. My gut would say maintenance. 290 grams of uh, protein, 450 grams of fat, 65 gra carbs, 65 grams of fat. Now, again, yeah, don't follow that by any stretch of the imagination. You probably don't need that much protein. You probably don't need that much carbs. And you probably potentially could need more fats. It kind of depends on what you're going for. That is quite low. But again, everyone's going to be different. There are tests you can do. And you'll actually find out if your body is more sensitive to carbohydrates or more sensitive to fats. Maybe something that you want to do. So, meal one, he has a choice. He can have four scrambled eggs, Swiss cheese, bacon, sauteed vegetables or 100 grams of oatmeal with raisins and apple sauce six egg whites and two whole eggs now the interesting part there you are going to get some protein in the cheese and the bacon but i would argue that because you're getting the protein there is still protein in oatmeal and the egg whites and whole eggs again this is why i kind of don't know where we're getting here because in meal number two within meal number one you're getting far more protein but uh, do i think he has bacon with his eggs yes probably because do not forget there are healthy versions of bacon you can get turkey bacon etc so never forget you can always have fun with your diet and again eggs and oatmeal that's a staple some people don't like porridge oats whatever you want to call it i'm a big fan of it i have it every day also good for your cholesterol mm, i think that's a good thing meal number two is a uh, 200 to 250 calorie protein bar so he's just having loads of fun with this two scoops of whey protein and two cups of water now i can kind of imagine him doing that on a film set but that doesn't seem like enough food for one Jonathan Cena. So again, I would take it for a pinch of salt. But again, let's try and extrapolate the positives out of this. The good thing about it is it goes to show, can one of your meals be some banana and a peanut butter? Yes. Can it be protein shake and some peanut butter? Yes. Can it be a protein bar with some whey protein? I mean, to me, do you need the protein bar and the whey protein? Potentially not. Maybe better to bring in some actual food so you get um, satiated a little bit better. But not every meal has to be death meal, right? Oh, chicken rice, chicken rice. You can have smaller meals. You can have larger meals. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve and what your day is uh, ordering you to do. Meal number three, here we go chicken veg brown rice the only thing i would point out there is he probably doesn't have two chicken breasts he probably has something like 200 grams or 250 grams of chicken breast because again a chicken breast could be 50 grams it could be 300 grams it depends on the size of the chicken breast and you do not have to have brown rice you do not have to have brown bread the only reason people say that is because white stuff is higher up on the GI index. So they say that it's going to go through your, or you're going to process it quicker and it's not going to fill you up for as long. But that's only true if you're literally just eating white rice or white bread, or whatever, out of a tin. That'd be weird. 
as long as you're having it with chicken breasts and you're having it with your vegetables, that's going to slow down your digestion process. So actually, when you took that meal, it would go lower down the GI index. I eat white rice. Why do I eat white rice? Because it sits in my stomach nicer than brown rice. I don't want to feel sick all the time. So I don't do it. You can do that as well. Meal four, same kind of thing. Whole wheat pita bread with tuna. So a tuna sandwich. Again, you can have a white one if you want. You don't have to be scared of bread. That's another thing. Some people can't tolerate bread. So again, make sure it's specific to you. But one of my meals at the moment is basically chicken wraps, which is the same thing. That's okay. Wraps aren't going to kill you. Meal five is back to the protein bar. <laughs> Two scoops of whey and protein water. Oh, he does have a meal seven. I was going to say he's going to have to. And in meal six, he's back to chicken or fish, vegetables, salads, pasta or brown rice. Again, rice and pasta basically have the same calories and carbohydrate, nutritional values. So you can pick and choose. Quite good if you are going to go for this kind of diet because you won't get bored. Same with chicken or fish, although chicken does have more protein than fish. So make sure that you are working that out. And of course, if you have salmon, that's going to have a load of fats in it too. So make sure you're always looking at each individual segment. And meal seven is low-fat cottage cheese with a casein protein shake. This is where I'm a little bit like, it just sounds a bit like a stereotypical bodybuilding diet. Because, of course, the reason people used to say, and still do, it doesn't make sense, to have a casein protein shake and low-fat cottage cheese is, A, it's high in protein, but also it means when you go to bed, you are keeping protein in your system. That's what casein protein is. It's a slow-releasing protein. And that's the same with the protein from cottage cheese. So essentially what we've done here is we're saying, oh, my gosh, you know, uh, slow-release. Uh, slow release protein all the way it's not a bad diet by any stretch of the imagination but again don't go and copy it one to one if you like how it sounds you're still gonna have to sit there and probably go much lower in terms of the quantities and then add or take away to suit because don't forget a lot of bodybuilding is always going to be uh, trial and error now again when i was 16 17 i would have seen this and i would have just gone straight in and it would have sucked it did suck i remember doing it so no uh, he also abides by these nutrition principles Eat every two waking hours. You don't have to worry about that anymore. I mean, he probably does to get all that kind of food in. If you want to eat every two to three hours, great. If you want to eat three meals a day, great. It doesn't make a massive part of difference. And everyone's going to be different. So that's kind of a myth. No, a myth. there's science behind it, but you haven't got to worry about it. Uh, focus on high protein, low simple carb foods. Eat plenty of complex carbs. Uh, well, he doesn't have low, low simple carb. I don't even know what that means, low simple carb fuels. I mean, complex carbs are better, obviously, because they're going to fill you up for longer, which is important. Casein protein at night for overnight amino acid release. We've talked about that. Uh, he has whey protein per workout containing about 40 grams of carbs to replenish glycogen reserves. That's actually another meal, to be honest. This would be quite high in calories. This is your window of opportunity. We've talked about it a thousand times before. Do you need to do it? No. Can you do it? Yes. But it's not going to make a difference. If you have a badass workout session and you don't run home and have some kind of sugary carbs and protein, Protein, you're still going to make roughly the same amount of gains as you would do otherwise. Once again, kind of why this article feels to me like it's just ticking the boxes, but it's fine. It's decent information. Drink half a gallon of water each day. Again, find out what works for you. I drink anywhere between five and six liters. Don't know what it is between uh, before gallons. But remember that um, it's going to be different for everybody and you need to be hydrated. Your muscles need water in order to grow and no refined sugars or artificial flavors. And I know that's bollocks because I've heard him in interviews saying that he often does have sugar so he doesn't send himself crazy. You're allowed to do that as well. Now we get into his workout protocol. See this training regime includes and i bet this is changing all the time so once more get that salt a five-day split routine medium to high reps 10 to 30 now i do believe that this is a, a switch and a shift in bodybuilding or weightlifting whatever that i'm very much a fan of we're kind of moving away from oh my gosh you know you got to do three to four one rep maxes or whatever that didn't make any sense if you know what i'm getting at to no time under tension form get up in those higher rep ranges that's what i think you should do if you're just training in general and for nothing specific i think getting into that 15 rep range with good form and really pushing and being intense is where you're going to force your body to grow just my personal opinion training to near failure in every set yes i think you should have some warm-up ones where you don't do that and then i think you should have around about three uh, working ones when you do pretty much go to failure train every muscle group once a week absolutely and don't forget you can get away with two it's true and testing one rep max one rep max at least once a month on key exercises like squats bench press and deadlifts now i think cena did actually used to do that he doesn't do it anymore do you need to do it absolutely not uh, john cena began working out with weights at the age of 12 and here is his routine i love when you go legs and calves <laughs> like your calves aren't part of your legs headline they are so he does seated calf raise and again he's doing 10 sets of 10 to 20 reps and standing calf raise four sets of 25 reps i mean it is hard to get your calves to grow, so I'm not going to poo-poo that too much. And I would say calves are the only muscle group where you really need to come up with your own routine and the other ones probably aren't going to work for you. Because I have crappy calves. I probably need to work them harder, but I don't because I've just given up <laughs> inside. I'm bored of trying to make them grow. Whereas some people just look at their calves and, and they get massive. So 
Can you blitz your calves like that? Yes, it depends how much time you've got, right? Because that's going to be absolutely crazy. He then does a standing leg curl. What's a standing leg curl? Should we have to sat down to do a leg curl? Whatever, that's what he's doing. Leg press, leg extension, squat, hack squat. I mean, the ones that I would take out there that I think are the best, again, that work for me personally. Calf, any kind of calf raise is great. Leg press is great. Leg extension is great. Squat is great. I would never do squat and hack squat on the same uh, session. Just my own personal preference. What I like to do is, so I'm training legs on a Monday. I'll do normal squats then. I'll train legs again on a Thursday or Friday. And I'll put in hack squats. I just think the way that it targets your muscles, it just works better. If you're almost treating your hack squat as your main squat on the other day, but also still doing squats just my personal opinion but again lots of high rep stuff um which i'm a, a big fan of and then we have a a picture of a 41 year old john cena which is from 19 to four years ago that was 500 pounds so there you go he did do the big lifts you got evidence there tuesday he just does chest which would be a joy to many people watching this video. Incline machine bears, three to four rep sets of 20 reps or high again. Incline bench press. Notice how he starts with incline. I think you should do this as well. So many people want to do the flat bench press because that's the big one. That's the core lift. But nine times out of 10, when you do incline and you do it right, you're going to work your upper chest, but also your mid and your lower chest comes into it as well. Whereas when you're doing flat bench, it's more just the middle. So the incline to me is just an all around better exercise. I would implore you to do the same or at least try it. Uh, machine fly, cable fly, and then he does finish off with a bench press. I mean, all that is you know is basically fine i'm a big fan of cable flies so i think you can really work on the side of your chest and really get that squeeze when you come down not a big fan of machine flies because i find them uncomfortable maybe it's just the machine uh in my gym and again anything you want to do with dumbbells is great as well because you have more control with dumbbells so on and so forth i'd be amazed if he just did a chest day but you can do that don't get if you're going to have the best session ever doing a chest day do a chest day right if that's what makes you happy you should do it of course, he does an arm day, and look how he has more exercise in the tricep than the biceps. And this feels like overkill to me, but again, John Cena is a mammoth, so he can probably get away with it. But he's doing standing barbell curls, preacher curls, dumbbell curls, standing cable curls, a lot of curls, obviously. And then rope push down, single arm cable push down, lying triceps extensions, skull crushers, seated triceps extensions, and tricep dips. Now, the big question a lot of people ask is, do I go bicep, 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 and then tricep, 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 tricep? Would it work in here? I think it would. I personally like to go, you can do it either way, but bicep, tricep, bicep, triceps. I think you're giving your muscle more time to rest. And you can't really do that with any other muscle, with any other muscle group. So you're just going to be more intense when you get to the next set, which is why I should do it. And here, he went tricep, bicep, tricep, bicep, tricep, bicep. Tri no, he would have to do the triceps extension and the tricep dips at the end by themselves. But, you know, that, that's what I personally would do. If you are having an arm day, I would always jump from one to the other. I just think it opens up the door for an opportunity you wouldn't have otherwise. He then smashes shoulders <laughs> way more than he did. One, two, three, five for chest and so many for shoulders. Again, I'm not entirely convinced this is accurate. Again, all, all crazy, not crazy high reps, but in the higher rep range. Rear delt cable fly. Always make sure you're trading your rear delts. Everybody forgets about them. If you want a full physique, you're going to need them. I know they're not the most fun, but do them. Do them at the end, do them at the beginning, do them whenever. Machine overhead press, machine side lateral raise, uh, dumbbell head overhead press, and then more lateral raises, but this time with a dumbbell. Seated middle you press and standing barbell press. Again, I don't think you need to do a machine lateral and a dumbbell lateral. I think within your dumbbell lateral raise movement, you should be busting your ass so much that you don't need to do it again. But it is all going to depend on how you train like if you know that you're not hitting the intensity levels that you should you can sometimes replace that with volume it's not really a one-to-one -one, um switch but again you have to work with how you're feeling and how you're approaching the gym i don't think you need to do that much on shoulders just my personal opinion i mean would i ever do a shoulder day by itself probably not i'd probably throw something else in there too and then back as you would imagine he's doing loads of stuff so he's got lap pull down barbell row single arm dumbbell row deadlift high pull high row pull up and a shrug which is a lot. I do like ending my back workouts with a shrug. Don't know why. I just think it works. I do like the single arm dumbbell row. Uh, so not the single arm dumbbell row. It's not on here. The single arm lap pull down. I'm a big fan of the single arm lap pull down. Give it a go if you've been struggling with lap pull downs. Because some people with the lap pull down, they don't get their back in the right position. They're actually pulling from their core or you know areas they don't want to. With the single one, you just you literally hold it in a, like a a handle and you can pull it down and you can really squeeze it so i would give that a go and yeah of course look in terms of what we're looking at in, ter in terms of quantity you should be smashing your back more than you're smashing your triceps right it just stands to reason your back your back is bigger do i think that's what john cena does no i do not but 
if you did that, I think it'd probably be, like I say, a bit too much in terms of volume, but you have to figure out for you. And we also learn about his supplement regime. He takes protein powder. Obviously, most people do. He has protein bars. Again, I like to use protein bars as a backup. I'm out. I need a meal. I can't get one. I'll smash a protein bar. He has BCAAs. Do you need BCAAs? Absolutely not. It should be coming from your protein, which it will do. If you want to add in EAAs, essential amino acids, that's going to give you a teeny little bit of a push. But these things cost a lot of money. If you can't afford it, don't worry about it. I would always say take a multivitamin. Just keep you healthy i know there are studies out there now that say you don't need one take one a day it's very very minimal cost and it's so unobtrusive unobtrusive inobtrusive whichever one it is you don't have to worry about it and the conclusion is john cena is one of the most successful athletes ever emerged from wwe after retaining a legendary status in the ring he is now in hollywood and we have documented how he eats and trains so that's the main reason i wanted to go through it i mean you could apply that to anyone you could say that brad pitt does that the rock uh vin diesel and nobody would bat an eyelid it's basically just a basic bodybuilding program that you absolutely can use but make sure that you cut and paste it so it works for you because that one probably isn't so it's interesting to go this through this stuff but i know i would have loved it if when i was sort of 18 19 somebody had sat down and told me this you know don't take it verbatim just because it's on the internet or in a magazine so i thought we'd do that as well as always it's always going to be horses for courses or whatever that phrase is. Figure out what works for you. Remember, you don't have to eat like a house to get massive. You can build muscle in a calorie deficit. So don't jump on and start eating three and a half thousand calories a day. And if you are just going to start tomorrow, start with 2,500 calories. Right? That's a recommended, recommended allowance for most people. Again, not the best advice in the world, but it works here. It's a marker. Do it for a few weeks. If you're putting on the wrong kind of weight, take it down. If you're not putting on enough, the, the right kind of a weight, put it up. It really is as simple as that. Don't stress yourself out about it. Use these as examples and nothing more. Cheers. Also, please do like the video, share the video and subscribe. Hit the bell ding ding. So that is going live. There will be another video on the screen, probably about John Cena. I like talking about him and leave a comment below and let me know what you think about all this. Also, you can go to grillofmind.com for Simon. You can Simon get 10% off. Exclusive videos on patreon.com for Simon316. Mostly reaction videos because we moved them there. Thank you for the support. At Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter, simonmiller.bigcartel.com for merch. And that's it. I'm going to wrap it up now because it's very hot in the UK and I'm sweating. Goodbye.